Hey everybody, my name is Ryan and here at eTrailer we install, test fit, and review a lot of different parts. That way we can try to answer any questions those of you might have. And that's exactly what we're doing here today on our 2013 Subaru Outback Wagon. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kurt Class 2 trailer hitch receiver. So I see a lot of Subarus going down the road with many different types of accessories and these Outbacks actually wear them really well. They look good on the car. And that includes hitch mounted accessories and this hitch is going to be perfect for those so those interested in using a bike rack or a cargo carrier this is going to be a great option for you so with this being a class 2 hitch it's going to give us that inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening and a reinforced collar for extra strength and i think that reinforced collar looks really good too kind of gives our hitch a more finished look is going to have the standard half inch size pinhole. Now keep in mind, a pin and clip does not come included, but if you need one, you can pick it up here at eTrailer. We are gonna have plate style safety chain openings, which aren't huge, but they do give us enough space to use just about any size hook that we might have. I also really like the fact that the hitch is gonna give us some good clearance. So what I mean by that is the end of the receiver tube opening it's going to be pretty much just about flush with our back bumper here and that's going to provide us with enough space that we should be able to fold pretty much any folding type accessory up in that stored position without having to worry about it making contact with the back of our outback as far as the hitch's weight capacities go it's going to have a 350 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating so that's going to be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch so that's good for those one to three bike racks, for example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, it's going to be 3,500 pounds. That's going to be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So it is a weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Now, I do always like to suggest never a bad idea just to grab your Subaru's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your Outback can pull out much weight safely. Now I'd like to give you a couple of measurements and you can use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be right at 14 inches. So if you do plan on doing some light duty towing, chances are pretty good. You're gonna to need to get a ball mount with a rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, that's going to be about three inches. And you can use that measurement to figure out that if any folding accessories you might have can indeed be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. And as far as the appearance goes, I actually think the hitch looks pretty good. Even though it does hang down a little bit, its smaller size does help it blend into the back of a Subaru. But other than that, overall, at the end of the day, a great way to carry around your accessories and enjoy yourself while you're doing all those activities that you love to do. Now, as far as the installation goes, not gonna lie, it is a little involved. You do have to do a little bit of drilling and it does take a little bit of time, but everything's pretty easy to get to. So you shouldn't really have any issues getting it done at home. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be underneath the back of our Subaru and we're gonna to need to lower the exhaust and make room to work. Before we do that, I suggest taking a strap and just running it from side to side. That way we can kind of control how far and how fast we let our exhaust down. So I'll put it on one side to the other kind of tighten it up a little bit and if you don't have a strap laying around the house you can always get one right here at each trailer to lower our exhaust down we're going to have a total of three rubber isolator hangers just like this and what you want to do is spray them down with some soapy water or some penetrating oil then you can take a pry bar and pop one end of it off. So we have one here and on this side of our muffler as well. Here's where that other hanger is. So we'll do the same thing to get that one off as well. Then if you follow the exhaust towards the front of the car, we're gonna have one more here in the center. So once all three of those are removed, what you can do is loosen up your strap a little bit and let that exhaust come down some. 
With the muffler down and out of the way, we can now remove our heat shield, which is this here. And this is gonna be held in place with four 10 millimeter bolts, just like this one. So you're gonna have one or less in each corner of it. those are removed, we can work the heat shield out and set it off to the side for the time being. Now if we move over to our frame rail, we're going to have two rubber plugs that we need to pop out. So you can just take a trim tool or a flathead screwdriver or something like that. Just kind of pull them out. And keep in mind from this point on, anything we do to this side of our Subaru, we're also going to repeat on the other side because it's set up the exact same way. Now if we look at our forward most hole here, so this one close to the front of our car, what we're going to need to do is enlarge it just big enough to where we can get our hardware in. So we need to make it large enough to get our spacer block inside as well as our carriage bolt. So what I'm going to use is this a step style drill bit and enlarge it. If you don't have one of these, you can also use a rotary tool, a hand file, something like that. This is pretty thick metal, so I do suggest using a power tool. It'll save you a lot of time. So once we have our hole relatively large, you want to grab the hardware and make sure that you could easily slide it in and out. So that's about the perfect size. Now, just to be on the safe side, since we did create some bare metal, what I'm gonna do is just take some spray paint, kind of give it a good coating so we don't have to worry about rust in the future. Now that we let our paint dry, we can get some of our hardware in place. So. And this hole here towards the very back of our car, we're gonna take a fish wire, take the coiled end, push it back until it drops out there. So what we're gonna do is take our spacer block, put that over the coiled end, and then our carriage bolt will thread onto the pole wire. So I'll get that on there. Then we can feed our hardware inside of the frame rail, pull the other end of our fish wire until our bolt drops down through like so. Now with an extra set of hands, we can grab our hitch and raise it in a position. So you're gonna wanna take the pull wire, put it through that hole there, lift it up. And you wanna be careful not to destroy your pull wire whenever you're removing it because we will be reusing it. So we'll just thread that off. We're gonna take a flange nut and get this going on each side. That way the hitch will support itself. Now that we have our hitch loosely secured, you wanna make sure that it's nice and centered underneath our Subaru. And once we find that spot, we can come back with a 19 millimeter socket and snug up the two nuts. Now we can use our hitch as a template to find where we need to drill out our other attachment point. So here's the opening in our hitch. Take my drill and bit and create an opening. Now that we have our hole drilled out, we can take our pull wire, just like the other side, put the coiled in into our attachment point, and we want to get it to drop out of that hole. Sometimes it makes it easier if you put a little bend in it, it'll kind of help direct it towards our access hole here. And once we have that coiled in through, 
We'll take our spacer block and our carriage bolt, get that threaded on. And we'll just simply fish all of our hardware, hardware into the frame and drop our bolt down. At this point, we can remove our fish wire. We're going to take a flange nut and get that started. Then we can come back with our socket and tighten it down. And don't forget to come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all of our hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. Now we can grab our heat shield and trim this little portion off here according to the diagram and the instructions. This is relatively thin metal, so I'm just gonna use a pair of 10 snips. When you're cutting this, these edges can be real sharp, so just be mindful of that and try not to Nick yourself. With our heat shield trimmed, we can reinstall it the opposite way that we removed it. I will say with these, make sure you get that heat shield up and over this back hanger here. So we'll hold it flat and re-secure it. This time we're only going to be using three of the bolts because the area we trimmed, we cut off that point there, but three is more than enough to keep the heat shield secure and prevent it from vibrating as we go down the road. Now we can go ahead and Lift our exhaust back up and get it re-secured. This is a little tight on this one with the hitch being here, but it is possible to get it back on. I do suggest spraying them back down with some of that penetrating oil. It'll make things a little bit easier. And now that the exhaust is supporting itself, go ahead and remove our strap. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Curt Class 2 trailer hitch receiver on our 2013 Subaru Outback Wagon.